Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Okay. Okay. Before we continue, uh, I think last time we discussed the eleven point eight, the power series, and I think I've uh, I need to mention one thing that I haven't finished to uh, to tell you. Uh, this part is actually not complete, so I will discuss this for for the introductions. Okay, but uh, from this, at least from these three example, okay, we have three possibility for the series. Okay, so I think this is the most important one in the power series. So if you have the power series in which you have the constant and then you have the x, the term x. Uh, we ha you have three, three possibility. You can be, the series can be converged when x equal a, which means when x equal a, it's, it's all uh, become uh, uh, zero. And then at the, uh, at the number two, uh, it's converged for all x, okay? So it can be happen. That, that means the n, the limit of n is uh, getting zero. So all x can be uh, uh, can be converges, okay? And then uh, there are some of interval, okay? So we de define the interval as the r, or radius of convergences. And we will also de uh, uh, define a, a interval of convergences. So there will be a three possibility. And Especially number three, I will maybe write down the same thing uh, as the example, this one. So let me let me just rewrite this in the new page and uh, explain what is really happening. So the the series is from n equal one. So the question is, what values of x does the series uh, converge? So first, every time in every series in power series, okay, uh, we will start by uh, using ratio test. Okay. So um, we can write a n plus one divided by a n. I will put the limit later. So I will. Uh, solve the comparison first, so solve the ratio first. So this will be uh, x minus 3 n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and multiply with n and then x minus 3 to the power of n, okay? And this will have the absolute value. And we have n n plus one, and then we have, this will be resulting the x minus three. And now I will put the limit as n approach uh, infinity. So it will be like that. And this will be this, okay. So this part, the limit part here is zero, uh, it, 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 it becoming one okay, because one over n is zero. So we will approaching x minus three, okay, the, the total uh, solution. Now, to make it the converge, okay, so I will write maybe here. So to be converged, the solution x minus three should be less than one. and diverge is a uh, greater than one. So converge is two x four and diverge okay. But it's it's not yet finished. We need to make sure that uh, 
what if okay, let me show you so what if x equal two and what if x equal four okay. so if we put x equal four then the series will be uh, four minus three and right or we, it, this is the series of one over n one over n is the p series right and the p is equal one so let me just let me write it diverge right so number four is diverge okay. if x equal two then it will be two minus three to the power of n divided by n this will be alternating series okay By alternating series test, this is converge, right? Or if you remember, uh, it's conditional convergence, right? So, so it's 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 converge and it's diverge. So this converge. So the total solution. Power series. Converge for two okay. So don't forget that after you find the interval, you find the uh, which one is converged and diverged. Don't forget to test when x is equal the endpoint here okay. and test the series and what kind of series will be if it is convergent you will put equal in here two equal less okay okay now uh So if if this is the R, so so let me write uh, if R if R radius of convergence and I is interval of convergence. So this is uh, interval that consists of all uh, values of x in which the series converge. Okay, let me copy this three possibility. Okay. For case number one, It's just a single point, single point A, the interval. For case number two, interval is all X, right? So all 
values. So number three, the interval can be, uh, we can write in inequality. And we can uh, write down also like, uh, and based on what we have done, there will be at least four. Uh, we can have this, or this, or this, or this. Okay. If you want to visualize this A and R, uh, we can write this is A, and in between A there will be uh, the radius. Okay. So maybe uh, maybe here is A plus R, and this is A minus R. Okay. Let me write as a uh, open hole, but it can be closed or open, depends on the uh, series. So this, so this is convergence for x minus a less than r. And we can also write here, this is uh, this is the divergence for so radius and interval. The difference is the radius is just the uh, the gap. Okay, the interval is the total, uh, the total values of x. Okay. Uh, let me give you the uh, some example. Okay, we can look at the number a. So negative three with the power of n and x with the power of n. 
uh, defined by square root of n plus 1. So at the very beginning, we can start by the ratio test. Multiply and then we can uh, solve this. So we will have negative three X and then square root of N plus one and plus two. And simplify. Uh, or let me write. Um, And then don't forget, we need to limit this to limit and approaching infinity. Oh, it's absolute value, so it's positive three. So we will have three and absolute value of x. Now, let me write here uh, to be converged. Three should be less than one. So X is less than one over three. And whenever you find uh, this form, this is the R, right? The radius. So you will have Uh, this will be converged. And this is diverged. And we need to check the endpoint. If x equal one, negative one over three, this is yeah. This will be one over squared n plus one. And this series is diverged, okay? This series is diverged. Uh, P series, right? P series and less than one. And then if X equal one over three, the series will be it will be an alternating series. In which the series is convergent or conditional convergence if you want to write completely. So converge, so interval of convergences will be this. 
So if the question is asking only radius of convergences, you can write the radius is one over three, and the interval is one is uh, negative one over three less than x less equal one over three. Okay. So again, uh, similar with the with the uh, example before, that you need to to check the endpoint. Okay. So you find first you find this one uh, from here to be convergent, it should be less than one. And then you find the x is less than one over three, and you find uh, you open the absolute value and find this interval, but it's not yet finished. You need to check each each of these endpoints. Check the endpoint put into the original equations, and you need to solve the uh, the convergences or 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 is it is it converged or diverged? And if it is converged, you need to uh you put um uh, equal in the interval okay okay one more and then uh I can go to 11.9. Yeah. So let me go to the next page and write the the questions is so same thing uh right on the ratio test Now we can solve this. Solve this. Express two. So we have n plus one over n, and then x plus two. Uh, this is three. So divided by three. Then we can use the limit as an approaching infinity. Or this is equal. So converge is when this value is less than one. And diverge if the value is greater than one. So the radius of convergence is three. And we need to solve the inequality. Uh, we can write this x minus two and one, right? 
and testing the x equal five, uh, negative five. So the series will be n negative three, negative five plus two, negative three. So it will be one number one over three. This is just one negative one n and n. And this is what? If you use the divergence test. Um, it's infinity, it's not zero. So we can conclude this diverge. And when x equal one, One plus two, so it's three. So it will be one over three. Three and three and yeah, only n. So this also diverge, right? Also diverge by the same method, the uh, divergence test which means the interval of convergences is so this is what we looking for and for 11.8 most of the questions will be asking the radius of convergence and interval of convergence okay most of the cases Okay, if we have still have time at the end of the class, maybe we can solve some exercise. But let me go to 11.9 because it's related to 11.8. Okay, uh, any questions? Any questions so far? Okay. So before 11.8, all the uh, problems in the in your textbook uh, uh, from 11.23 until 7 most of the cases is just a series and then you have the uh, sequences of n right series of the sequences right but in 11.8 you you have the aside from n you have the the x and this is what you need to find so in the power series, uh, the convergence is not a set of value, it's a set of interval. And that way, you need to find this, that, that set of interval. Okay. So instead of um, saying the, conver uh, the series converts to 0, to 1, to 2, there is sometimes the convergence can be, can be determined by uh, some value. But it can be determined by, oh, maybe the convergence is a set of uh, interval. Okay. So that, 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 that's the case in the power series. I think this will be, uh, I think if you, if you want to study more uh, about the series, uh, you will still learn the series until, I think, engineering of math, you will, you will have the series like that. Yeah, so you still, you still, you will be meeting the series, yeah, more. <laughs> so uh, I hope you understand the, the concept. Okay. Okay, let me go to uh, eleven point nine. This is actually 
still related to power series okay this is called the representations representation of function as power series let me write uh, as a introductions the geometric series of x with the power of n okay. if we expand okay if we expand this geometric series start from zero so it will be one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on right and you know that the ratio here the ratio is x and for the geometric series the ratio need to be less than one to be convergent right so x should be less than one okay and we can compute the s right the sum of all the value which which is a divided by one minus r so in this case, okay, in this x with the power of n, a is 1, 1 minus x, right? So as so a conclusion, actually, we can write 1 over 1 minus x as a representation of the this geometry, the total geometry as long as x is less than one okay we can rewrite all this expansion with only one over one minus x with the x uh, it should be less than one to be converted so we can write this total expansion into just the sum okay You can also uh, try to see the the graph of one over one minus x. You can check the graph, but I think I will not draw here. Maybe later. You can check and maybe uh, you can write the SN. And you can check it uh, with each, uh, which each, uh, which each N. So you can check S1, S2, okay? And by doing so, you can have the partial sum, okay? So partial sum. For example, S1 is uh, from, from 1 plus x. This is 1 plus x plus x squared. And then you can have until the beginning. So you will have the linear, right? The linear part, the linear part, and then the, the parabolic part, and then the, uh, the cubic part. And you will see each of the uh the partial sum they will have uh, different graphs and you can observe the functions okay but keep in mind okay keep in mind this function okay keep in mind this function Okay, if uh, let's say I have another function, one divided by one plus x squared, okay? 
and uh, express g functions g as sum of power series. And find uh, interval of convergence. Okay, now remember, if we look at the f, okay, one over one minus x, this will become our basis, okay, our basis formula. Okay. So, look at the g, one plus x squared, okay? And now, we have f, one over one minus x. The idea, because we know this, will become one plus x plus x squared plus blah, 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 right? So the idea, we need to change this with this, okay? So, so the g let me write this as one, one minus minus x squared. So you see that this, the form now is similar. One minus, one minus, and this is x, this is ma minus x squared. Now we have this expansion and now we can also expand it, right? So we can expand. Let me just write uh, one and then minus x squared and then plus x4, right? Minus x6 and so forth. Okay. Or we can write down this as sum minus x squared with the power of n. Or we can separate the negative part, become the alternate series like that. So to be convergence, same thing as before, we can write down how the series can be converged in which you need to define the ratio. The ratio is minus x squared. It needs to be less than one, or you can write like this. Or it will be like this. Okay. So the interval of convergence we get, at least we get here. Okay. Uh, we can also apply the ratio test as before but uh, I will skip it for now. You can, we can apply this, but you, you can see how it's forming. But let me just continue for the, the, uh, the examples here, okay. So at least the idea is to replace the x with the uh, negative x squared, and it might have an, um, maybe variations in terms of the g, you can change most of the uh, equations here, but the idea is still the same. What you need to do is replacing this x with something from the question, okay? Okay, that's the... Uh, Example one, uh, let me move to uh, another examples, maybe another two example. That's uh, if there is another functions, uh, h one 
1 and then uh, defined by x plus 2. Now this is a little bit tricky, but the idea is still the same. What you need to do is you need to, to manipulate, rearrange the form from the original f. So I will write f is 1 divided by 1 minus x. Okay. So from the H, let me write two at the left side, and then let me write uh, two as a factor. So I've factorized two, so this one plus, and then one, one minus minus X. Okay, so at least this is this is the x right from from this one. So one minus x. So this is already the form. So we can write half and then sum of the series negative x with the power of n. Or we can uh, rearrange and becoming negative one and then xn and then two n plus one. So this is our sum. And con this is, will be converged with the uh, negative x over 2 is less than 1, or this is less than 2. So the interval will be from negative like 2 to 2. And then if, okay, if the functions uh, is multiplied by x cubed, like the other example, so if you have the k, function k, what will happen? You just add x cubed, okay? Just adding the x cubed. So the sum will be the same or similar, but you can add the x cube here. So should be not a problem, okay? So the thing is, you just keep in mind that you need to to remember this one over one minus x, okay? And all the uh, the functions that might come 
and might be asked in the exercise. You need to manipulate, rearrange, change this x, okay? And if it's like okay, you have x cubed, you just multiply the x cubed with the result from the one over x plus two, okay? So that's the introductions. But the interesting part is not yet. So I, I will give you uh, what will we uh, had it now. So if you have, uh, let me write the one over one minus, minus x. We can write this as sum xn, right? So another point in uh, in our study here, if we for example, okay, for example, I want to differentiate this. And this will be one, right? What we can do is actually we can differentiate this all all sides we differentiate. So this will be one plus two x plus three x squared plus dot 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 and it will be some now it's from one okay because it's it's uh, shifted because of the differentiate and this will be n x n minus one So uh, the next section is is discussing when we have the sum, we can actually differentiating and integrating, and it will affect all the terms here. Okay. Now let me write the the, the formal definitions of what what we have done here. So this is called the term by term uh, differentiation and integrations. So suppose you will have uh, some functions, but you know the function is actually the, the integrations or it, it is ha uh, from the integrated uh, form from some, another function. So you can look up that function and you integrate to find the sum okay. or maybe differentiate. Okay. Uh, it's called term by term uh, differentiation and integration. Let me write the theorem first. The theorem, uh, if our series Cn x minus a with the power of n if our series has a radius of convergence or R, or let me write uh, R directly, R is greater than zero, then F define Let me write the F. Okay. 
So this is the definitions. And by definitions, F is differentiable. Uh, continuous on the interval and the two theorem the first is differentiations the um, let me just for f prime x the different the first derivative so this will be c1 plus 2 c2 and then plus 3 c3 and n shifted from 0 to 1 and it will be n cn x minus a and n minus 1 the other one is the, the integrations. So, because integration have another C, so let me write the big C at the very first, this, this constant from integral, integral, plus C zero X minus A plus C one, uh, let me write two, uh, maybe like this, if I by two, okay? And then C plus C two, three divided by three, plus that, that, that is equal. Now it's C plus the sum Cn uh, x minus a and plus one and over n plus one. The radius of convergence for both case of equation one and two are PR. You can write the terms as d dx, uh, the sum and you can also write the integrations. Okay, any questions?
And let me give you some example. And uh, we will just focus on 11.9, I think, or 8, 8 or 9. Let me give you an example here. Uh, find a power series uh, representation. Uh, and it's an R, the radius of convergence. Find representation and R. Uh, for this, and maybe we start from the simple one first, and this. The two questions. Or maybe I'm, I'm adding another uh, questions. X and then one plus four X squared. Okay, four questions. Well, let me let me uh, tell you the first two. Okay, the let me write A, B, C, D. So let's try A and B. Okay. Number A, the functions is ln one plus x. Or let me just write the this is f x equal. Okay. Uh, let me start by looking at the functions and, and how we can uh, rearrange. So what you can do is actually you, uh, you observe the functions first and think what you can do when you differentiate or integral or how can we get this ln, what, why this ln come, okay? And we, if we think ln, the easiest way is maybe we just differentiate first, okay? If we differentiate this, it's just one over one plus x. And always remember that the basis of our idea, all the representations idea is one over one minus x. Okay. So from here, you can actually 
manipulate the form and make it one minus something okay? and this become negative x okay and from here you can write down the expansions will be one minus x plus x squared minus x cubed plus da, 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 right so if we put back the ln this is actually the integral of one over one plus x dx okay and we can also integral all the expansion form one minus x plus x squared uh, minus dot 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 dx okay now this form that just integral all the terms as much as we can but maybe three or five, uh, four terms that's enough so x and then plus plus c at the very beginning at the very end so we will have sum of um this will be x with the power of n and divide by n n plus c in which the ratio is less than one to be converted. And the next thing is we need to evaluate the constant. How to evaluate the constant? We put some x. Okay. So if x equal zero, so we will have ln one plus zero, right? And all the terms that have x will be zero. So c will be zero. So ln uh, one plus x is just the, the same without the c, okay? Without the c. And the R is equal one. So uh, the the key the important key is to to find the relations for ln. Okay. Can, it, can it be the integrated or differentiated? And the next thing is you need to relate all the differentiating and integrating part with uh, again the key is this. Uh, one over one minus x. This is uh, will be our uh, important point. So don't forget this part. Okay. okay, that's number A, and we will move on to number B, the tangent inverse. Uh, I think you can guess the tangent inverse because it has relation with one over one plus x squared, right? So, so it's it will be similar to to the form one over uh, one minus x. We just change the x to negative x squared. Okay. Okay. Let me write the b 
number b is the tangent inverse x. So if this is function, and uh, let me differentiate this and become one over one plus x squared. Remember what you can you need to do is you need to replace okay? you need to replace the x into into the x squared. So uh, the tangent inverse is actually the integral of the one over one plus x squared dx. And this expansions is, uh, just, uh, let me just write the, the, the results. One minus x squared plus x four minus x six plus da, da, da. and then dx. Now it's it's actually similar from the ln. Okay. So we need to integral. So this whole expansions we integrate. Okay. So let me put C at the front and then plus X minus X cubed plus X five. and minus x7. So all the terms that is even now becomes odd, right? Uh, this is actually also uh, interesting. And we will have one section discussing the terms, um, this odd even relations with the differentiating and integrating. And plus that, that, that. So to find C, uh, we can put X equals zero. So if X zero, then tangent inverse zero becomes all the terms become zero, right? So this will be equal C, so C is zero. So tangent inverse X is X minus x cubed divided by three plus x five divided by five. Or we can conclude the sum. You can write 2n plus 1 as also in terms of um, the odd number, right? And the r is also 1, right? Okay, let me put the number C and D for our uh, for our exercise here. So number C is X uh, defined by one plus four X squared. Now, how, how do we start to solve this? 
how do we solve this? How to write the representation? Okay. So first, uh, because we will deal with the one and one minus x, right? So first, maybe if we look at the one plus four x, and maybe we can try to recreate some functions. One. Okay. Maybe we can recreate this function first. And then maybe think if we differentiate this, what will happen? Uh, and I think that that is because this squared give you give you some clue that okay, we, maybe we need something to differentiate. And and how to solve this is actually first uh, try some functions and try to differentiate and manipulate the form, and you will get the the, the sum of the function from from the function. So at the very beginning, let's just try this one over uh, one plus four uh, x. Or let me just write up, uh, maybe this is f. And if, if we differentiate this, what will happen? The bottom will be one plus four x squared, right? And the top one will be minus four. Okay. So next thing to remove the negative, probably we need to multiply with something, right? Multiply with what? X four, right? Okay. To become our or, uh, original function. But uh, let's just focus on this app. Focus this f, and we can recreate the one. Okay. We can recreate this one over uh, one minus minus four x. And if we see from what we have done, this is actually minus four x with power of n. And then differentiating, so let me write this, differentiate. It will be um, oh, let me erase this first uh, and let me add later okay, to, to help you see the form first. So n x and minus one and then minus four n or we can uh maybe simplify a little bit mm, minus four n plus one and then n plus one x. Oh, so actually, how, simplif how to simplify is, is up to you. Uh, if you feel a certain point that's already fine and, that, and it's already correct, then that's okay. And now let me write the fx is the actual functions is this one plus four x squared. And this is actually negative x over four. Multiply with negative four one plus four x squared. And we can write this and change this negative four with this sum that we have right before. Okay. 
and then we may also include x over 4 inside the equations. Uh, negative 1, n, and then 4, n, and then n plus 1, x n plus 1. And remember, the ratio is less than 1, right? So x is less than 1 over 4. So radius is 1 over 4. So the, the sum will be this, and the, ratio, uh, the radius will be this. Yeah, I hope all the multiplication with the power doesn't confuse you. <laughs> so you need to be careful. Okay, you need to be careful. And let's see. Uh, actually, it depends on what the questions will be. But if just it is just a general questions asking the sum, what is the representation? If you just write this part. Uh, I still give you a uh, test uh, full point, okay. as long as it is a general question. But if the question is asking more a specific reason or uh, specific proof or specific value, then you need to uh, to rearrange the form until you find the the what the question is is asking. So let me review a bit because it's it's quite um, quite confusing at the very beginning. So so the idea is if you have x and you have the one plus four x squared, okay. First, you need to think of functions that maybe you can differentiate, maybe you can integrate, okay. But because you have squared at the bottom, probably the functions is something that you can differentiate because if you have a fractions and you have squared at the bottom, then it's the quotient rule, right? So what you can do is, actually you can try to, to rearrange one over one plus four x first. Okay? And maybe you can think what you can do after you differentiate, what will be from this f, what is the f prime? Oh, you can see that it's, it's actually minus four and then this uh, one plus four x squared, right? So to, to change this form into the original one, you need to multiply with the x over four, uh, negative x over four, right? Okay, so that's, that's actually the, the total uh, original equation that you can um, break down into this uh, form. Okay? And now, from this uh, form itself, one over one plus four x, you can find its sum, right? This is actually the key uh, for the representation function. Okay, the other part, the the, the negative four, uh, and you need to multiply with something. It's actually what you need to add later on. Okay, so after you find the sum, and how to get the sum is actually from the differentiating this function, which means you differentiate the the sum also. So you find the sum from the function f. You need to differentiate that to go for the original one. Okay, so it's like um, forward and backwards um, kind of things. Okay, and then at the very end, you uh, complete the sum, and then actually uh, you finish um, and proving that, okay, you have this original equation. And this original equation, you can break down into minus x over four, uh, multiply with negative four, divide by this. And this whole thing is the sum of this. And you have negative x 
over four, and then you can also add it x over four in, inside the equation, and you get the results. And by the way, this is the typical question in the in the eleven point nine. So if you miss out one or two here, um, you it will be very difficult for the next next section because the next sections uh, eleven point ten is actually still related to kind of this uh, situation where where you need to differentiate, integrate, differentiate, integrate, but as a whole uh, sum, like you have plus, 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 but the order of that constant and how the X will be is based on how you differentiate and integrate. So yeah, that, that will be the next section, the Taylor and McLaurin series. And I think Taylor and McLaurin also still important in the, in the next few future for you okay okay now the last example is this now it is quite uh quite uh, complicated So the first thing, what you can do, or can you try to, maybe I'm giving you three, four minutes to, to try and think how, how, to, uh, how to break down this, this, uh, this cubic formula. If cube, maybe it's not one, uh, not first derivative, maybe second derivative, right? So twice you need you need to differentiate twice probably because if you differentiate for the first time you get squared differentiate one more time you get cube right and then uh, the important part is the this two minus x so you need to maybe try to make out any functions that has one over two minus x and try from there. Manipulate uh, differentiating and um, yeah, maybe twice differentiating. And since we will, uh, I think, there will be no class on Thursday, right? So 11.10, uh, maybe next week. And that will be the end of, um, of the chapter 11 for now. Because after the Tyler and McLaurin, uh, we will have the applications, how to find the size of error and so on. But I think I will skip for now all the all the applications part for from the chapter eleven. And then that's this the uh, chapter eleven. So after Taylor and McLaren, I will go to the factors and maybe skip some parts that you already familiar with. And then because now we are in the end of March, um, so the schools, the schedule actually for the midterm uh officially it will be around 12 to 16 the uh midterm week right so i'm offering you the maybe 20 or 22 of april 
the midterm is chapter 10 and 11. If not 22 or maybe 27. Yeah, it's three dates, okay. And I will maybe, after we finish the class, uh, uploading the video and also asking or maybe offering you uh, some schedule for the midterm, okay? So the midterm only chapter 10, 11. Now let's finish this. Uh, so we start by taking some functions of this one over two minus X. Because we can differentiate twice and make it cube. But let me just focus on this. Now this is similar of what uh, previous previous examples. This is x over two with the power of n. Or we can include all inside. Two n plus one. Let me write two n plus one. Now let me write the f prime. If we differentiate, it will be one divided by two minus x and the squared. And the the right side will be the sum from one. Uh, it will be n, x, n minus one. Uh, okay. And my suggestion, because we are dealing with the more than one variables, like we have n, we have x, but all the differentiating, it's all x, okay? And then we differentiate one more. And this will be, you can check yourself, uh, try the question rule. And this will be two minus X cubed. And then this will be shifted to N equal to and let me write two, one over two n plus one, and then this will be uh, n n minus one, and then x uh, n minus two. We can simplify this. And let me shift this two into zero. So n plus two, n plus one, two n plus three. So I'm adding plus two, plus two, plus two to shift back to zero, okay? So x, n, right? Okay, so shift it. Then the functions of this is from this. So we can have so let me mark the what we find is with this, right? And we can include the x cube over two with this sum of our solutions. And 
we can have from n plus 1. This is n plus 3 from x cubed. And then 2n plus 4. Yeah, this is the result. And then the r, because it's x from x over 2 less than 1. So I'm having this equations and the R is equal to. Okay, so if you're still having a trouble with the derivatives to differentiate, uh, uh, please review the calculus one, the product rule, quotient rule, uh, all, all the derivative parts. Uh, also integral, okay. Uh, how to use derivative and integral in, in, in chapter 11 is actually not really, uh, not really that complicated, the, the method part, but how you apply the differentiate and integrate, that will be the tricky part. So yeah, I think I will stop here and uh, next week I will continue to move to Taylor and McLaren series. That will be the very last part of the chapter 11 and maybe some exercise for you. And after that, we move on to factors. Um, and then if we still have time, maybe before the midterm, I will review chapter 10, 11. Because I think Thursday and I think next Tuesday also still holiday, right? Right. So we will meet the next uh, next Thursday. Yeah. And if you want to have some exercise, you can do some exercise in my suggestion eleven point seven. Just the early parts of the exercise, that's enough for just exercise. And 11.8, the early part of the question, also 11.9. And if you see any questions that asking the approximations of application for error, uh, just skip it for now, okay, just skip it. Okay, I think that's it for uh, today.